So Tommy, I've got a question for you. What's the most popular car that Lexus sells in America? You know, Dad, it is this car, the Lexus RX. Now, last year, 2017, Lexus sold over 108,000 RXs in the United States. Out of how many cars, all told? Well, last year, 2017, Lexus sold over 300,000 cars. So over a third of them were the RX. So why is this car so popular? We're gonna find out today. You know, the best way sometimes to figure out exactly what a car is all about, Tommy, is to compare it to another car. And we were lucky in that we happened to have a BMW X3 at the office, but not just any BMW, right? No, it was the BMW X3 M40i X-Drive. Now this car doesn't exactly compete with that car. It's a little bit bigger, six inches longer actually. That car is a little bit faster, but this is the F-Sport, so in some ways, they are similar, specifically on price. How much does this one cost? This one cost $60,000. Which is about the same as the BMW. So let's not compare them, but let's contrast them right. to show why this car is so popular. And I think we have to start with, well, the basics, room. This car is roomy. I think people appreciate the utility of it. Uh, and Andre and Nathan had a chance to directly compare how much room is in this car to the BMW. This is Jeff, and Jeff is part of this test. He's our backseat bear, and we're gonna put him in the backseat, and we're gonna see how much room he has behind the driver. Right, Jeff. Jeff. Leg room in the BMW, backseat, 36.4 inches. Andre is six foot two. I think the room is self-explanatory. Lexus has 39.1 inches of legroom. I'm six foot one. As you can see, more space. Yes, the BMW's back seat is smaller, but interestingly enough, the X3's cargo area behind the second row is much bigger, 28.4 cubic feet in the Beamer and 18.4 in the Lexus. It must be that roof, the sloping roof. You know, Tommy, one of the things that makes this car, well, such a Lexus is the fact that it not only insulates you, but it isolates you from the road. It's like having your own little house on the road. It is so quiet in here. But the question is, is it more quiet than the BMW X3? Well, there's one way to find out, I guess. Andre and Nathan, take it away. For the quietness test, for the cabin, we're gonna be running at 55 miles an hour. I'm gonna set comfort mode, so this is not a sport mode. Okay. Um, we'll do the same thing in the Lexus. Okay, we're setting cruise control, and we're in comfort mode. 55. Okay. So let's do this. Mm -hmm. 66.1. 66.1. Huh. It's quieter than a pickup truck. Yeah, but is it quieter than the Lexus? Ooh. Okay, same stretch of road in the Lexus, 55 miles an hour. We are now at 55. Okay, so let's measure right now and see. Mm -hmm. 60.4. Okay. That's so this is significantly quieter. That's noticeable. Yeah. Now, of course, Lexus makes two versions of this car, right? They make this one, which is a normally aspirated, and they also make the hybrid version, which is also normally aspirated, but it's electrified. And that's a very fuel-efficient car. But unlike BMW, which we're contrasting, not comparing, this car doesn't have what? Turbos. So it's a naturally aspirated 3.5 liter V6, and the EPA says it gets a combined rating of 22 mpg. But the question is, how does it do in the real world? Yeah, well, Andre and Nathan found out. Ooh. 
this is how our MPG loop is laid out. It's 17 miles, takes about 27 minutes. And for this particular comparison, the X3 won. I cannot believe this. It got 27.1 MPG versus 27.0 in the Lexus. But the X3 is a little bit lighter, has that freewheeling mode where it puts the transmission in neutral when it's coasting. My brain is exploding. Tommy, do you think that Lexi buyers, that's a plural of Lexus, use speed as a determining factor, or should I say quickness, when they make their buying decision? In an RX 350? Yeah. No. So, you know, we always like to do a little bit of a mashup drag race, and of course we did it with this car, the BMW. Yeah, the big engines, turbocharged, sporty X40M. Versus the normally aspirated six cylinder. Which one won? I think we'll let you take a guess at that one. Yeah, we can probably guess, but uh, let's uh, cut to the chase. Guys, we love going to IMI Motorsports, and if you use our name, TFL, and use the link below, you can get a 10% discount on go-kart rentals. If you bring your car, can get a 10% discount or if you use dirt bikes or play in the motocross park also 10% discount so thank you very much to the track and thank you guys for watching I think we know how this is gonna end but we gotta do this for the sake of science right turbocharged x3 versus normally aspirated I'm in sport plus mode I shut off the traction control and... Probably not gonna win. We had a good takeoff. Yeah, I jumped it a little bit. He beat me like a red-headed stepchild. Where is he? I can't even see him. It's kind of like having somebody who runs in the Olympics track and field to get somebody from junior high running track and field. Just saying. Okay, well, there you have it. Tommy, I mean, I've been driving this car for about a week and I'm kind of torn because the things I love about it, at the same time, I hate about it. So I love how quiet it is, but I hate how quiet it is. I love how it insulates and isolates you from the road, but I hate how it insulates and isolates you from the road. Maybe I'm getting to the age where I start to appreciate quietness and serenity but I'm still at the age where I want power and speed, and the two don't work together, especially in this car. This is certainly at that end of the spectrum where if you want something that is quiet and serene, then this is the vehicle. Yeah, but Lexus tried to spice it up in this one because we have the F-Sport package. So that gives you a slightly tuned suspension, some more sporty interior bits and bobs, um, and then black mirrors and accents. But it, it doesn't really make it into a performance crossover, right? This is not gonna be something you're, you're gonna take to the track. Yeah, that's why we decided to contrast it, not compare, mind you, to the BMW, because that is the exact opposite of the scale, right? That one gets your heart thumping. It's performance oriented. This one is, well, whatever the opposite of that is. Well, what I really like about this vehicle is all the technology they have implemented. We have all the safety tech, we have the Lexi Safety Suite Plus, we have a 12.3 inch infotainment system that's very colorful, very vibrant, and it feels very modern, right? The interior design is sleek, the exterior design is sharp. I think it's very competitive to the German vehicles. So the base price in the Lexus RX350 is $43,470 in front wheel drive and $44,870 in all-wheel drive. This one, however, with the F-Sport package, 
um, and about $9,000 worth of options is $59,345. Which is very similar to what the BMW cost. Very similar. Yeah, so in that way they do compete. I think Lexus has hit upon a formula that speaks to a lot of different people, right? Uh, but the problem with that is the more mainstream you make it, the more boring you make it. And that has always been Toyota's recipe for success. They take a car and they give it the biggest possible bandwidth that you can have, giving it the biggest possible market potential. But at the same time to do that, you really have to round off the edge of the vehicle. And it really depends on what you guys want. I mean, I think sales numbers prove that you guys want a car that is the Goldilocks. Right, it does everything well. Yep. It's the right size, it's the right cost, it's the right fuel economy. But for an enthusiast like me, and I suspect for you, right, we want the car where the edges aren't routed off, but where they're pointy and fun and perhaps a little bit, I would say, sporty and adventurous. No, I'm going to disagree. If I'm buying a crossover, I want it to be soft and round and comfortable and extremely quiet. And that's why I really like this car. Fair enough. As always, this is Roman. And Tommy. We'll see you guys next time. Ciao.